Foul vermin, I stab at thee. Ah! Ah! Hello everyone, I'm origami designer Tim Rickman and in this video I'm going to be showing you the continuation of how to fold my origami model crab louse. In the first video I showed you how to fold the base for this model and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to perform the shaping. So the first thing that you want to do is to open the model slightly so that you can reach in and undo these layers in the back here. You want to do this carefully. I've gone ahead and penciled in the areas where we'll be adding some creases to shape the model. So what we need to do here is extend the abdomen and the way to do that is to alter where these valley folds are. So as you can see here, the third row of boxes underneath this folded edge uh, right above here, you need to fold this in half and you just want to crease in half in between these two lines and those start at the bottom of these V shapes. So just in between those two boxes, make your mountain fold and fold to uh, the bottom of that row of boxes like this. I'm going to kind of um, speed through this a little bit just for brevity to make the video not so long. Uh, but um, you want to really spend your time and do all this shaping very carefully. Uh, when we're doing these creases for the abdomen, you don't need to press down too firmly because we're actually going to be sliding them a little bit uh, toward the end of the shaping process. But you want to make sure that these four boxes are split in half. And this last one, you just fold that last row of boxes in half by bringing the mountain folds to the raw edge. So we should have one, two, three, four, and then this one underneath here. And uh, again, those happen on boxes three, five, seven, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those in half, just in between these two lines. So we need to get this valley fold we've raised back to the valley fold here so that we can collapse these legs down. And the way we do that is just to add a diagonal crease that goes from the middle of this line back down through three boxes to those, the corner in between those boxes. So just go ahead and start to reform from that diagonal. on both sides. And repeat on the other side. Now what we need to do is to hold all of this together on this side of the diagonals and then bring all of these together on the other side of the diagonals. And if we collapse this down as it was when we had our base assembled, by pushing in along this valley fold here and then making this a mountain fold again I should be able to start to move the model back down into a flattened shape. Um, it's going to want to pull out here. Go ahead and allow the model to uh, 
to curve in here instead of following the line it was to compensate for the new directions that the folds are going in. And then you want to repeat that on the opposite side. Bring the legs together on this side and make sure that um, all your creases are in the right place here. Go ahead and recollapse the model down. Creating a new rounded crease here along this edge. And that should allow the model to then lie relatively flat again. Um, if you want to, you can lightly press down just to hold everything in place while we're shaping the rest of the model. Okay, so now that we have the model looking like this, The next thing to do is to thin, start thinning down the legs. I like to start with this back pair of legs. Um, really what you're doing is you're just going to lift up the layers one at a time in this V, sort of V shape in the back so that everything meets in the middle and you can fold this in half and roll it. And then the same thing on the top, rolling each of the layers forward individually until they meet. And then you can um, start to really roll this into a round shape. Again, uh, I'm going to be kind of brief at this video and just show you the general idea. Uh, you really want to spend your time shaping this and making all of these nice. For the claw, you're going to uh, thin down the rabbit ear fold by bisecting, as I've indicated here, bringing the raw edge to the folded edges on the top and the bottom of that angle. And then this extra material here, you can sink fold these, but it's just as well to, um, to fold them over. like this. And then fold them in half one more time to really thin that down. Okay, now there's going to be some extra material above this claw. Just push that down and if you roll everything together here should be able to shape this claw like I'm doing here. You want it to be in this sort of a position. Okay, but as you can see, um, it's pointed in the wrong direction now. It's pointed down. Uh, so you want to, as you're shaping this, twist it forward. Okay, so that when the claw and the leg is shaped, um, it's in the position that it is in this with everything pointed up. And next we move on to the next uh, pair of legs. You want to repeat that on the opposite side and then there's a bunch more paper here. Um, what you're going to do is you're just going to fold this in half along this crease in the middle. Just bring everything here together. Okay like this and you want to take this material which will end up being the front appendage and move that up. You know, it's going to get in our way right now. So you shape this leg just about the same way. Um, you want to thin down the rabbit ear like this. And uh, this leg has a little bit of extra material up front. And the way you take care of that is to sink some of this material down. And just incorporate this with the claw. Fold all these, shape all this together as though it was, you know, one point instead of two. And you're going to do the same thing. <laughs> 
you could sync fold these, but I find it's easier just to fold all of this up like so. And then try to fold it all in half one more time get the idea okay so you're shaping that just like you did the back legs and now here instead we're going to fold it in half from the front fold all these layers together and really take your time to roll these so that uh, the legs end up being very rounded you could even use some wet folding here and maybe bind the legs with some twine or tape to um, really get them confined and rounded. And then once you have your legs uh, started to be rounded, what you want to do is angle them forward a little bit. They have a, a curve to them. Um, and you want to get them to be angled up like this. Okay. And also, uh, this little bit of paper here, it gets folded underneath this abdomen part, but if you look at it from the side, you can still see it. So I like to um, just shape it a little bit more like this. And then that actually gives a little bit more length to the legs as well. Makes it look a little more natural. Okay. This leg in front, uh, you're just going to fold it into fourths. So, kind of start to roll it up from the bottom. And then, again, from the top, working with the angle. And start to move into that corner as you come to it. And so, um, Roll the sides down to the middle, and then if you can, fold it in half one more time to really thin that down. It's difficult to show you this in an abbreviated version of how to shape this, but hopefully you understand what I mean. You're going to bring this together one more time. Really thin that down, okay? take your time with it and uh, should come out fine just like that okay and now this area here has sort of a lot of bulk of paper you're just going to valley fold that and um, push all of this back up underneath the model as much as you can and it ends where this part that's going to become the antenna here uh, it ends at the bottom of that. So push all this underneath like so and now make sure that you have this angled out. Now the antenna, you want to gather it up like I have here and then fold it in half like this and then pinch it together as close to this hinge as you can and once you get that pinched down like so. Um, you want to angle this out and press it down so that it uh, is angled out like that. And then you want to fold that in half one more time like this. It should look like that. Let me go ahead and do the other one. So, up like this, try to get, to get it as close to that edge as you can and then push it to the side. Okay, what we need to do next is to create the mandibles and you do that by splitting the point. Um, the, what we need to do now is bisect the angle between here and this edge like I have shown you with the uh, pencil markings here. This part's a little bit tricky. Um, if you folded my Dungeon Dragon model, this is how I create the toes, or the claws on the end of the feet. 
So fold that bus section and then come back and it's a little bit easier to do one at a time. Like this, okay? And then fold both of them together. And when you do that, it should create this little flap here, and then these edges should be flush. Now what you need to do is turn the model over, and keeping these edges on top of one another, you need to release the paper that gets kind of bunched up underneath. And you're going to create a new crease by pushing that paper up. And now it should look like this. Do the same thing to this side. Push that up. And now what you should have is this extra little flap of paper in the middle here. And then it looks like this from the top. So you have two sides, two points that are independent of one another. And if you pedal fold this, it makes it a little nicer. Um, if your paper is really small, sometimes this can be a challenging thing to fold. But basically, if you want to Fold it down just like that. Okay. Now we have two points. Um, what you want to do now is to dissect the angles of this flap to create the mandibles in the front. This one and then the other. Again, I'm kind of breezing through this just to show you the idea of how to fold this. Um, really take your time. Okay. All right. And now we have these soft curves. We're going to start to shape the model with these softer curves. This one in the back is going to be a mountain fold, and the one in front of that will be a valley. Um, kind of reach in here and start to shape that nice soft curve. And then push this back. You kind of bring these sides together. Um, at the same time, you're kind of trying to round out the top of the head there. Sometimes it helps to take something round and kind of push into that. And then make sure that the jaws are still having a nice shape there. Okay? Basically, you want it to end up looking like this in the front and have the head rounded off like that, okay? And then next, you want to make an indentation here at the top of the abdomen. Uh, so you're going to see three folded edges here. Uh, don't worry about this one that the neck is going into, but just these three. Sometimes it helps to reach in from behind and it's a little tricky, but you just want to fold these back and maybe again use something else to kind of help you shape a nice rounded curve there at the top of uh, the abdomen. Like that. And now you want to round off these corners here. It's easy enough, just um, push in, push 
these down and you want to actually pull these up like this and then try to get them to match push in a little bit like that if you work at it you can get that to kind of come together like it is here instead of a gap like it is on this side and um, it makes it look a little more natural if you can take some of these layers inside and kind of push them back like that. It kind of helps lock things into just a little bit, some extra shaping to kind of make it look a little more natural. Okay, and you also want to take these creases here, these folded edges, and try to like fold these down a little bit. All right, now we need to take care of the back of the abdomen here. Um, carefully, you want to pull out this layer in the back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this box, these boxes into fourths. So make your mountain fold where it is already folded in half and then fold that in half right here um, along the midline and then also take this one up and then try to fold that in half too. So everything, all those edges are like one on top of the other right here and then as we move out to the edge you want to kind of curve those so that it's difficult to say what I mean but hopefully we'll see what this is doing see here now we have like it a little bump on this side and then You really curve it right. Kind of like that, only nicer, like it is here. So you want it to end up looking like this, okay? Just so that's indented. Uh, lastly, we want to reach inside here and pull apart just slightly roll this back just a little bit and that's going to round off the abdomen here instead of being flat and if you do that very subtly uh, you don't want it to be domed heavily it's not a beetle you just need it to be a little raised to give it a little more personality okay and that's also going to change this angle so I'll go ahead and readjust here and that's all the um, the shaping that you need for this model so I hope that you've enjoyed this video again this is Tim Rickman and this is my model crab louse um, I've been designing origami for a couple of years now and a student of advanced origami for about three years uh, I post my original models as origami tutorials online because that's how I learned uh, to fold advanced origami and I want to give back to the community and um, <clears throat> see if I can inspire some other people to become origami enthusiasts themselves. Uh, I put out new videos as often as I create a model. This is uh, an example of something that I'm going to be producing a video for soon. This is uh, Ridley from the Super Metroid video game. Um, also using a lot of box pleating. Uh, really enjoy having subscribers and comments and uh, likes to my video. It kind of helps keep me fueled up. So if you liked this video and you want to see more, give me a subscription and maybe leave a comment and, uh, you know, all that good jazz. All right. I hope everybody's had as much fun as I have. 
and uh, I really hope that you enjoyed folding this model. If you if you happen to fold one, I'd love to see a picture. I have a Facebook page, and also you can leave a video response to this video. I think that would be killer. Well, thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.